and welcome. Thank you for popping into my channel. If you are new here, please like and subscribe for me. If you find this content helpful, hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on the next video. Comment below with anything that you need help with or topics you'd like me to cover, and check out my website, consultingninja.tech. With that out of the way, let's look at ChatGPT. If you are not familiar with what this is, it is an AI. It's all over the internet right now. Many videos claiming that this is going to replace developers, that this tool is going to make development obsolete. Let me just tell you right away, that is simply not the case. This is a very powerful tool. It certainly has some benefits, and I think that it has a place in development alongside real developers. However, this is nowhere near capable of replacing a developer. So it is an artificial intelligence, but it's not creating anything. This tool is primarily designed to chat. That's the whole name. So people who are saying, oh, it's gonna replace developers, that's not even what this thing is designed for. It's designed as a new chat bot, essentially, a, a very advanced chat bot. This is not meant to replace developers. Can you do development stuff with it? Yes, but it is only regurgitating information that it's been given. It is not actually conversating, nor is it writing its own code. Just like you asking your coworker to write you some code and they give you something with some bugs in it, or you look at somebody's repository and you find some bugs in there, guess what? This thing is not smart enough to fix those bugs because it's not writing its own stuff and it will just spit out code that has bugs in it. It also is not super intelligent on the imports. I've asked it to make some, some programs for me. Those programs did not turn out very well. Let's, let's jump right in here though and let's, let's have this thing make an app for us, okay? Let's tell it to make us a, let's have it write a React app. Please make Please write me a to-do React app that can create to-dos, update to-dos, and delete. Now, I have not done this. So we're doing this together right now on the fly. Well, let's just see what this thing comes back with. I've had this thing give me some pretty cool stuff, and then I've also had it give me a whole bunch of incorrect information. Let's just see where this goes. I have a, I have a, I have a skeleton app already in the background, ready to copy and paste this in there, and we'll just see if it works. Let's see how advanced this thing really is. Now, while this thing's giving us this code, I do want to point out that if you're serious about development and you're serious about wanting to incorporate AI in your development, then I highly recommend you actually look at OpenAI's uh, other tools, which is specifically the DaVinci. The DaVinci is much more powerful than this. It's not meant as a conversation tool. It's meant as a really, really, really robust uh, artificial intelligence that's actually better at writing code, in my uh, personal opinion, in the amount of time I've played around with this one. I've also played around with the, uh, there's several other ones by OpenAI, and I would say so far the uh, DaVinci is the best at writing code. So let's see here, it's saying it's done. We're gonna about to copy and paste this and see what happens. Let's see, this app consists of a form for adding new to-dos and a list for displaying the existing to-dos. Handle to-do function is called when the form is submitted and adds the new to-do to list of to-dos. The handle delete to-do function removes the to-do from the list, and the handle update to-do function updates the to-do by replacing it with a new value. All right, let's take a look here. Looks like everything's all in one file, so let's just go ahead and copy code. All right, now I've already got this thing up and running, so let's just paste it in here, right? Because this is what this is doing is uh, replacing developers so I'll give this a save and then we just need to update our uh, let's just let's just change this to app so that we don't have to update anything now that I say that let's go ahead and update that and give this a save now let's look in our browser and see what what we have here enter a to do well it doesn't look very good <laughs> enter a to do mess with chat GPT add all right well it looks like i've got one edit see if the edit works <laughs> okay this definitely is not uh 
this is not common programming practice. I, I guess technically this this works. Uh, enter new <laughs> enter new value. Mess mess with chat GPT more. <laughs> Let's say. Okay, well, it definitely updated it. Let's take a peek at that code again. I did not notice that is how it was that is how it was. <laughs> It was asking for an uh, an edit and it was using it was using an alert handle where's the update prompt interesting so it decided to use uh, that is very interesting to me because so technically this is another to me this is another example of how this would not work right this is not this is not accessible programming you would never see this uh, or almost never see this in the real world if you go to facebook if you go to facebook or meta or any of the big companies you go to amazon and you're working on your shopping cart or you're e editing a post on facebook you're never going to see a website or an app prompt you for new information using an alert or a prompt like this that's that's never that's just never going to happen you're never going to see that so while technically technically the chat gpt was right i mean this this does functionally work it did edit it did update that to do however the way it implemented it which is so funny to me because again this comes back to this thing is not writing its own code it's regurgitating code that it's been fed so where did it where did it get this like who <laughs> who out there is programming like this like where is it seeing where is it seeing that this is the way that you would prompt a user for information it's it's curious to me i wonder if maybe that's coming from you know like maybe a text based programming language and it's it's merging the two together so that's interesting. Let's like let's look at the rest of this. We have uh, some use state to do set to dos that looks pretty straightforward. New to do set new to do. Okay, so that's one. I see what's going on here. That's just a little form for the current, the current to do. Okay, and it's using just a simple text input, and when you change it, it's updating that local state again. This is kind of like the you know two years ago, like this portion of things. This is kind of like the two years ago way of, of doing things. Uh, you don't see a ton of, especially for something like this, you don't see a ton of controlled state where you're nitpicking each little piece and handle handle change like this where you have a piece of state for the the input anymore. A lot of people are pulling those out on on submit so I, the way i would write this is i would have the edit button or the uh, i'm sorry the add button in this case i would have the function handler there when that button is clicked then we go ahead and and pull the value out and do any any sort of error checking as you can see here also um the, you know the handle new new to do it's not doing any sort of error checking or, or value checking or anything like that let's see it does it do a type of text uh, placeholder and, and it added some placeholder value as well interesting that it did put it inside of a form so wow this is interesting the way it did it so I I never would have a this is kind of like the half and half way so I would have the handle to do handle all of this so let's let's refactor this on the fly here let's get rid of this value and the on change we'll leave that and then Let's get rid of this. We don't. We won't need this piece of state. And then we can get rid of. Uh, we don't need this function at all. And then here, handle add to do. We don't want that. What we would do is do uh, e dot target dot. And what are they? There's no name on here. Well, that's interesting so we do would need to add a name to do and then here we could just do e dot target dot to do dot value and give that a save and that should do the same thing mess with chat g and there you can see mess with chat GPT. So it, it that's this is the way that I would do it. So it eliminates that whole need for the second piece of state. 
you don't need it at all. You can get rid of that whole entire function for updating that state. You're not doing anything with it. If you need to do any sort of, so in, inside of here, if you needed to do any sort of uh, value checking. First, let me also point out here that the way I would do this, I definitely would keep the type text and anything that really mattered, if you had a number or phone number or email, force the browser to do that basic stuff for you. If you have an email or number, make sure to use the types so you have your props set on your input. That way the basic uh, error checking is out of the way. And then inside of your form submission uh, handler, this is where you would do any sort of additional checking, value checking here. And if it's not in your criteria, then you could set a message or just pass it back, set the focus to the element that you want them to fix. So that's how I would handle that. You could you just put that, you know, additional additional input checking here. That's definitely how I would do this. It just makes it cleaner code, a lot less code. This prompt is so funny to me. I just can't get over that. So let's look at the rest of this. So this handle delete to do this is this is good. I I probably wouldn't change this at all. The filter is going to return a new array, so that's good. This is another weird piece here as I'm looking at this handle update. So they're going to set to do's, which makes sense. You would want uh, map returns an array, okay? But when you run a map, what a map does, it takes the previous array and runs a function on each thing. So you're creating a function and running a function on each item in your array when really all of this could be replaced with just a small little piece of code. Let's do that now. Let's replace all of that with, let's make a new array and have this be dot, dot, dot to do's. Okay, so we've got a, a fresh copy of the to do's and then all, we've got, all we're gonna do here is just do, well, we can do it right here. New array sub index is assigned new value and then just plop the new array in here. We probably could have done this in less steps. Whoops, I have an extra R there. This is a lot cleaner and it's, a, it's faster because you're not creating a new function. I don't know why you would want to do that. Uh, so you wouldn't, I guess is what I'm saying. You wouldn't, you wouldn't want to do that. So that's a way of cleaning that up a bit. Yeah, I still can't get over this, <laughs> this alert style prompt. How would we clean that up? Let's see. You could have a second array of edits and anytime you click edit, it adds that particular index to an edit. And then in the map, rather than returning this, you'd return a different, so do some more conditional rendering. You you'd return some other JSX with inputs instead. And then if you saved it, it would just remove that out and update as well. There's a few different ways you can do that. So overall, um, I would say, did the code work? Yes. <laughs> is it going to replace developers? Absolutely not. You would never see that stuff in production. It was not, it's not fast code. It's not code you'd see in real life. Did it do what I, what I asked it to do? Sure. Let's not get overly zealous here on this chat GPT. And again, remember this AI was not even designed to write code. One that I've heard about, I can't remember the name of it. I'll see if I can find the name and I'll link in the description if I can, but th there's a new one that's supposed to be coming out that does actually write code. It, it doesn't just regurgitate. So I'd be curious to see how that one operates. Here, here's our current state of chat GPT and no, it's not going to replace developers. Is it useful? Yes. However, I would recommend if you want to incorporate AI into your uh, development tool set, uh, I would do that, but I would not use ChatGPT. I would use DaVinci, which is available on uh, openai.com. There's a playground that you can use there. They were doing a promotional credit, but even if you have to pay for it, it's just a few pennies for every few characters, uh, every few words. So it's very inexpensive. It's, I think when I use it, I maybe spend like seven or 10 cents a day. Really, really cheap. It's worth it to uh, cut out some boilerplate sometimes or get ideas. Anyway, I hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe. Comment below with what you guys have thought about the chat GPT. If you're using AI in your programming tool set, let me know. Uh, stay tuned for the next video. And as always, have a great day.